welcome to this virtual service of morning, of morning worship at uh, St. Paul's on the Hill. We are glad that you have joined us and we hope that this service in the prayers, in the hymns, will be a blessing to you. We're going to begin by singing Alleluia, Sing to Jesus. and peace be with you. May he fill our hearts with joy. Lord, hear my voice when I call to you. My heart has prompted me to seek your face. I seek it, Lord. Do not hide from me. Praise your holy name. The maker of all things, the God worship we. Heaven, white with angels' wings, earth and the white waved sea, worship you. May the blessed Trinity protect me wherever I stay. 
Abba, word and sacred breath. May Jesus and the Holy Fa and the Father, may the Holy Spirit sanctify us. May the mysterious God, not hidden in darkness, may the bright King save us. The praise of Christ is illustrious speech. The worship of God's Son is an art full of virtue. May everyone who has sung it or heard it belong to God's kingdom without rejection. Christ, 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 Christ hear, hear me. Christ, Christ, Christ of your meekness. Christ, Christ, love me. Sever me not from your sweetness. Have mercy on us, O God most gracious. Immeasurable God, all-knowing and most tender, patient God, incorruptible God, immortal God, eternal God, perfect God, merciful God, wonderful God, heavenly Father who abides in heaven, have, have mercy, mercy on us. Have, have mercy, mercy on us, O God, holy and compassionate, God of earth, God of fire, God of the waters of wonder, God of the gusting and blistering air, God of the many languages found throughout the world. Heavenly Father, you who abide in heaven, have mercy on us. Have mercy on us, O God the Almighty. Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, O true knowledge, O true light of love who enlightens all darkness, O guiding light, O Son of truth, O morning star, brightness of the divinity, O radiance of eternal brightness, O Christ crucified, O eternal judge, have mercy on us. Have mercy on us, O God the Almighty. Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, O angel of great counsel, O true prophet, O true apostle, O true teacher, O high priest, O Nazarene, O Christ crucified, O eternal judge, have, have mercy, mercy on us. Have mercy See on us, almighty God. God. Holy Spirit, blessed Spirit of truth, O teacher of true wisdom, O spirit of understanding, O spirit of counsel, O spirit of strength, O spirit of knowledge, O spirit of tenderness, O Holy Spirit, who rules all creation, visible and invisible, have mercy on me. Have mercy on us, Almighty God. O Holy Spirit, sacred and divine minder of souls, O Spirit of love, O Spirit of grace, O Spirit from whom all good comes, O Spirit who annuls all guilt, O Spirit who wipes out sin, O Holy Spirit who rules all creation, visible and invisible, have mercy on me. Lord, be with us this day, within us to purify us, above us to draw us up, beneath us to sustain us, before us to lead us, behind us to restrain us, around us to protect us. We must get up before the sun to bless you, O God, and adore you at the break of day. O God, you are my God. Eagerly I seek you, my soul is a thirst for you. As the invitatory psalm or the invitation, uh, we sing, Come People of the Risen King. Church of 
God, you are my God. Eagerly I seek you. My soul is a thirst for you. The first reading is found in 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 17 to 23. If you invoke as Father the one who judges all people impartially, according to their deeds, live in reverent fear during the time of your exile. You know that you were ransomed from the futile ways inherited from your ancestors, not with, with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without defect or blemish. He was destined before the foundation of the world, but, he was, re but was revealed at the end of the ages for your sake. Through him you have come to trust in God, who raised him from the dead, and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are set on God. Now that you have purified your souls by your obedience to the truth, so that you have genuine mutual love, love one another deeply from your heart, you have been born anew, not with perishable, but imperishable seed, through the living and enduring word of God, the word of the Lord. Thanks. Our psalm is Psalm 116, verses 1 to 3 and 10 to 17. <clears throat> I love the Lord because he has heard the voice of my supplication, because he has inclined his ear to me. Whenever I call upon him, the cords of death entangled me. The grip of the grave took hold of me. I came to grief and sorrow. How shall I repay the Lord? for all the good things he has done for me. I shall lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his servants. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant and the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of his people, in the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. Hallelujah. <coughs> Excuse me. In the psalm prayer, eternal God, faithful in your tender compassion, you give us hope for our life here and hereafter through the victory of your only Son. When we share his cup of salvation, revive in us the joy of this everlasting gift. We ask this in his name. Amen. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Now on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, 
who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed over him to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself and all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road? while he was opening the scriptures to us. That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. May God be in my head and in my understanding. May God be in my heart and in my loving. And may God be in my mouth and in my speaking. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Have you ever had the experience of looking for something and you look in all the places where you think it should be? Someone else comes along and says, well, it's right there. Can't see for looking. The disciples on the road to Emmaus have a similar experience. They can't see for looking. Somehow, Jesus looks different to them. They didn't expect to ever see him again. They're in sorrow, despair. Their hopes and dreams have been dashed. They say we hoped he would be the one to redeem Israel. Their expectations didn't reflect reality. They've heard about the tomb being empty. In Luke, some women encounter angels of the t at the tomb who remind them of what Jesus taught. Handed over to sinners, crucified, raised on the third day. The women go and tell the, um, the eleven and the others. But the others and the disciples thought it was an idle tale perhaps because it was the women who were reporting. How could anyone believe it? The two walking on the road don't recognize Jesus, but the stranger walks with them, talks, teaches, stays with them, and they ask him to stay with them, have a meal. And then when they do know him, he disappears. But they remember how they felt, our hearts burn within us. They experienced his presence. Where is Jesus in the realities of our lives? What I call in the mess. Jesus meets the disciples on their journey as they are going the wrong way, away from Jerusalem. Scholars have tried to figure out where exactly Emmaus was. There's no place on the map at the current time. 
and there's nothing definitive. Perhaps it was within a seven mile radius and there are four or five towns which might have met, or perhaps it was 17 miles away. But because it's not a place, it's a journey. A journey that all of us are on. The journey, the road to Emmaus is open to all of us. Our road is at the, in the midst of all the worst pandemic in 100 years. We experience frustration, loneliness. We miss physical touch, especially if we live alone. We may be grieving for someone we know who has died or who has been near death. And we can't have the usual ways of dealing with our grief or expressing it. Funerals or celebration of life or simply sitting by the bedside with someone who is dying. It is a road that takes us through many changes. The pandemic has brought a lot of changes into our lives. But this past weekend in Nova Scotia was a terrible mass murder, and it has brought changes to us, both in Nova Scotia and here in the rest of Canada, where we have thought that we were safe from irrational violence. Where is Jesus on this road? Do we recognize him? It was suggested in the midst of this that we should light a candle, a, ca a candle reminding us that Jesus is the light in the darkness. He is the light of the world. Where is Jesus? Right in the midst of the problems we face. He's there in those who rally and support on social media and the various ways of connecting through the internet where is Jesus in the midst of the COVID-19 crisis? His presence is made known in all the acts of kindness, the willingness to care for others, in the selfless acts of doctors, nurses, staff in long-term homes and hospitals, and even with people who are dying and seem to be all alone. There Jesus is beside them. Each of the characters in the Easter narrative, Mary, Peter, Cleopas, and his companion, is met by Jesus on their own particular journey. They do not recognize him immediately, but they experience his presence in their own way. We have, over the years, put together official ways of meeting Jesus in the sacraments. And we have said that where two or three are gathered together, he is in the midst of us. But we have to find new ways, different ways, in hymns, telephone prayers, virtual services. Are we open to the many experiences that we can receive that Jesus brings to us? Do we recognize Jesus? The disciples on the road to Emmaus asked the stranger to stay. Are we open through this different media to ask him to stay, to accompany us on our journey? Or are we looking and looking in the expected places and we can't see for looking? Let us pray. Lord Jesus, the light of the world, illuminate the road we travel, that when we meet you along the way, we will recognize you and invite you to stay and accompany us on our journey. In your name we pray. Amen.
come to a time where we express our faith, not in the words of our usual uh, creeds, but in a way that brings us into the picture. Lord, you have always given bread for the coming day, and though I am poor, today I believe. Lord, you have always given strength for the coming day, and though I am weak, Today I believe. Lord, you have always given peace for the coming day. And though of anxious heart, today I believe. Lord, you have always kept me safe in trials. And now, tried as I am, today I believe. Lord, you have always marked the road for the coming day. And though it may be hidden, today I believe. Lord, you have always lightened this darkness of mine, and though the night is here, today I believe. Lord, you have always spoken when the time was right, and though you be silent, today I believe. We pray to Jesus, who is present with us to eternity. Jesus, Lord of life, in, in your, your mercy, mercy, hear us. Jesus, light of the world, bring the light and peace of your gospel to the nations. We pray for the world that you have made in love, especially the battle with COVID-19. Remembering those who are suffering, those who have died in their families, and especially the frontline workers. We pray for the Anglican Church as it witnesses in the world. Jesus, Lord of life. In, in your mercy, mercy, hear us. Jesus, whose peace passes all understanding, help us to bring peace in our world. We remember those of our parish who are experiencing problems in body, that are suffering during this time, especially a time of isolation. We pray that you would be very real and near to them this day. 
And so, Jesus, Lord of life, in, in your, your mercy, mercy, hear us. Jesus, bread of life, give food to the hungry and nourish us. Nourish us all with your word. Jesus, Lord of life, in, in your, your mercy, mercy, hear us. Jesus, our way, our truth, our life, be with us and all who follow you in the way. Deepen our appreciation of your truth and fill us with your life. Jesus, Lord of life, in, in your, your mercy, mercy, hear us. us. We offer our prayers for those who are ill or in need of, or in need or trouble. There are those of our parish that have been suffering for a while. We think of Janice today and ask that you would touch her, that you would come and remove the pain. We think of those that have uh, endured a surgery lately. We pray that you would be with them. We think of families that are struggling because of employment issues during this time of shelter in place. Those that are in need of finances. We come to you today, Lord Jesus Christ, and ask that you would be the one that is able to meet and supply every need that they have. That you would bring those that are able to Encourage and strengthen them, whether it's by phone, by mail, uh, by an email, that you would just lay people on our hearts to be able to lift them up. And so, Jesus, Good Shepherd, who gave your life for the sheep, recover the straggler, bind up the injured, strengthen the sick, and lead the healthy and strong to new pastures. Jesus, Lord of life, in, in your, your mercy, mercy hear, hear us. us. Jesus, the resurrection and the life, we give you thanks for all who have lived and believed in you. We think of Ray Coulter today. We pray that you would uh, just uh, welcome her into your kingdom this day. I would lift to you as well. We thank you for the life of Elmer, others that have died, uh, particularly. We think of the numbers that have died at Orchard Village here in Pickering. Uh, we pray that you would minister to the families of those that have died, that you would give them a sense of peace when they haven't been able to be there. We pray for the frontline health workers that are there. And we think of the army or the military that's been brought in to help out in that home at this time. And so we ask for the workers that are there working tirelessly, we pray that you would just strengthen them this day. And so, Jesus, Lord of life, in, in your, your mercy, mercy, hear us. O Lord Jesus Christ, risen from the dead, we praise you for changed lives and new hopes at Easter. You come to Mary in the garden. You turn her tears to joy. For your love and mercy, we give you thanks. We, we praise, praise your, your holy name. name. You come to the disciples in the upper room and turn their fear into courage. For your love and mercy, we give you thanks. We, we praise your, your holy name. name. You come to the disciples by the lakeside and turn their, their failure into faith. For your love and mercy, we give you thanks. We praise praise you, your holy Lord. name. You come to the disciples on the Emmaus Road and turn their despair into faith. For your love and mercy, we give you thanks. We praise, praise your, your holy, holy name. You come to your people now and turn our weakness into triumph. For your love and mercy, we give you thanks. We praise, praise your, your holy name. name. Accept our prayers and be with us always. Amen. Amen. O oh God, your Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread. Open the eyes of our faith, that we may see him in his redeeming work, who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And let us pray as our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And deliver us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, to me, the least of saints, to me, allow that I may keep even the smallest door, the farthest, darkest, coldest door, the door that is least used, the stiffest door. If only it be in your house, O God, that I can see your glory even afar, and hear your voice, and know that I am with you, O God. And we say together, Christ the lowly and meek, Christ the all-powerful, be in the heart of each to whom I speak, in the mouth of each who speaks to me, in all who draw near to me, or see me, or hear me. May the road rise to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your, fi your fields, your face. May the rain fall soft upon your fields until we meet again. And may God hold you in the hollow of his hand. We're going to sing a blessing that is based on the hymn, St. Patrick's Breastplate. salvation, O Lord, be always ours, and the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. I would like to thank you for joining us. Next week we'll have a, a very different service. Uh, the Reverend Dr. Uh, Paul Skews and the Reverend uh, uh, Doug Willoughby are going to put it together, and I'm going to have a Sunday off. And uh, so I hope that you will join us. Um, 
I am very thankful to the people who are here on the platform with me, uh, Joanne Karam at the piano, uh, the Reverend Doug Willoughby behind me, and Sharla Bake Barker, yes. Barker, who's right on my left-hand side. And, um, and also, a great deal of thanks to Bill Bradbury, who puts this together every week and brings all his equipment and um, makes up the PowerPoints. I appreciate it, and I hope you do too. We will sing one of my favorites, Thine is the Glory. Rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God.